greetings, everyone. This is Rock and Roll Rock with, with, with the Weekly Comic Book Roundup. And we've already gotten started with uh, Alien Number One. However, now we're moving on to more to videos of of more uh, content, I guess. We'll be able, we're going to put it. Starting with Cable Number Nine. Where we left off, uh, Cable had uh, somewhat successfully broken up a. Uh, a mutant child kidnapping ring. Uh, to, to clarify, it was humans kidnapping mutant children. And upon doing so, he all, he learned that they were actually set up. They, they, were, they had been, you know, hired, you know, put into place by none other than his clone, Strife. And so he's been trying to track down Strife, but not exactly in the best of luck. Uh, the issue begins with a quote from an anonymous page of the Green Lagoon. Cable, everyone was scared of the old man. Nobody is scared of the kid. But uh, apparently an AIM sub ended up uh, off the coast. Got a little close to uh, Krakoa and... Cable and uh, Esme Cuckoo went aboard and uh, messed with their re and messed with their reactor a bit before leaving the sub. Kind of, a, they'll think twice about uh, violating our wa our our wa our waters again. Um, and while Cable has confided what's going on with strife with Emma, he actually has kept his mother, Jean Grey, out of the loop. But uh, Cable decides to basically try and figure, try and find Strife some more. So this, this gives us a meeting with in Matt. Uh, I'm presuming Madripoor with Patch, which Cable's mere presence at fouled up. It was an undercover job for Pat for Logan. Uh, talking to his sister Rachel at the Boneyard, she. Can't find. She's had no luck finding him, finding Strife either. Figuring he's probably off planet. Um, but Rachel does remind does uh, tell remind Cable about uh, Inferno, which you know he was almost sacrificed. He as a baby was almost sacrificed to demons, so he has magic taken to Limbo, and he talks to Nastir, one of the. Uh, Demon Lords of Limbo, who was behind the events of Inferno. Turns out he's the way that uh, Ileana is torturing Nastir is having some of the demons play recorders and kazoos while one sings the lyrics to And I Would Walk 500 Miles by the Proclaimers. Next, however, he, in the Wild Hunt, Cable asks Wildside, and well, Wildside decides to have some fun with it and get a fight out of uh, Cable. But uh, then Hope shows up, and mentions that uh, you know Wildside could have simply said, "Hey, I don't know where Strife is," but well. Getting into a fight with Cable is more fun. And Cable and Hope for you know get a begin getting a little closer. Um but yeah mentions that he's mind wiped Strife, he's killed Strife, it, yeah, nothing seems to stick. And that maybe, maybe they need the old man back. The other guy, older Cable, is in a future timeline, having been apparently defeated by, well, Strife, lying unconscious on the ground. There's also a bit about resurrection protocols and duplicates. Um, basically saying that it was decided that it would un the validity of the protocols would be undermined 
and multiple versions of the same person were to be produced. This is then extended out to the concept of duplicates in general, that other forms, clones, versions from alternate dimensions, time-traveling doubles, would also not be eligible for resurrection. Or perhaps to provide our point on it, only one of the duplicates would be eligible. Exceptions were made in cases where duplication is an extension of mutant gifts. The, se the separate cuckoos being able to be resurrected back to their five cells, or Matter as Prime being able to be resurrected even if one or more of his dupes have survived. Which kind of makes me sad when it comes to Blink because on the one hand there's 616 Blink who from the Generation Next story which led into the original Generation X comic series. Then there's Age of Apocalypse Blink, the Blink that has actually become much more prominent in Marvel Comics who last I saw was actually staying on Earth-616 with relatives of her uh, multiversal counterpart. But anyway, that's where Cable ends. For, the, uh, for this issue of Cable ends, at least. The title seems to be, however, since the end, coming to an end in a few months. That, that's another story. We'll cover that in a few months. Next up, we've got Excalibur, number 19. Where we left off, Betsy Braddock, was Betsy Braddock was trying to return to her home after having been shattered in Ten of Swords. Uh, this led to um, her possess basically possess taking possession of a multiver of one of her multiversal counterparts' bodies and meeting the that universe's uh, Quenon as well, and eventually getting back trying to get back to her. To home. Upon returning, however, it wasn't Betsy in there, and she attacked some of her uh, cohorts, including Rogue and Quanon, and before heading off into Otherworld. Um, throughout the multiverse, however, the other Captain Britons are trying to find Betsy. Uh, they have they they have found her, and they approached Saturnine, basically saying, you know. Say, hey, we need your we need Saturnine's help to get her. And well, Saturnine, yeah, basically tells them exactly where to stick it. Um, going and adding that you know if it's a different Captain Britain that uh, Saturnine wants, sorry, but he is he's retired, married, and elsewhere. So, however, instead, however. They go to uh, Avalon to speak to Monarch, Jamie Braddock, while uh, Richter, now having the grimoire of A, is trying to resurrect Betsy. Um, her essence is apparently locked in a, in a lantern, which uh, Psylocke then shatters. It... Uh, Flies off, goes through one of the gates, and ah, okay, so they're at uh, they're at the lighthouse. Yes, so Salak goes after it, finds it in a, she's she's able to communicate with Betsy's essence telepathically. Um, but they swear off. They, they Betsy tries to prevent Quanon from finding her, but eventually Quanon does, and they kind of. Cohabitate Quanon's body briefly, which Quanon's body isn't exactly an unfamiliar home to Betsy's essence, as it were. She did, after all, spend quite a lot, quite a while trapped in that body. But uh, Quanon saves the village that where Betsy's essence ended up, and we get there's apparently a ballad written to her, uh, the ballad of the, of the Violet Stranger. Um, they get back, but uh, they manage to get back, and uh, with the Starlight Sword, Quanon return places the Starlight Sword in the body in the hands of Betsy's body, and Betsy does uh, resurrect, but she's apparently choking on something, and she coughs up a choker.
the choker of Malice. Who and Malice, psychic, the psychic entity, you know, entity known as Malice, makes her way through the gate and heads to Krakoa, where she could be, where she can become damn near anybody. And that is where the issue ends. Which brings us to this week's King and Black tie-ins, starting with Savage Avengers number nineteen, where we left off, Conan. Deadpool and Nightflyer were attempting to rob the Hellfire Club and got caught by Iceman, Bishop, and Callisto, who... So, uh, they, f they fought, um, but yeah, um, they're basically thoroughly stopped. However, Bishop decides, why not make use of, of, the, of this trio? You know, he, he, Bishop himself knows well, Deadpool's good in a fight. Doesn't know who, this, who uh, this Conan guy is, or Nightflyer, but, you know, hey. So they, this, the trio get hired um, to rescue, or to save uh, Cyclops and Storm from Null's Thrall. Um, Deadpool and uh, Nightflyer say that they want a duffel of cash. Peace, by the way. While Conan simply says that uh, he won't, he, when all of a sudden he wants, he wishes to have words with Logan. So Nightflyer is the distraction. Because he can, you know, fly and therefore catch the catch notice of the uh, symbiote dragons. Um, Deadpool and Conan, meanwhile, make their way up the through the, the Empire State Building, where they run into. And upon the, upon reaching the roof, they run into Cyclops. Um, however. <laughs> Callisto makes a point of does point out how much of an idiot uh, Deadpool is once they arrive on the roof because well, to one of Deadpool's favorite things to wield weapon wise is dual katanas, you know, metal blades, and there's no sign of Storm, you know, the, the mutant that can among other things create what's that stuff? Oh yeah, lightning. Yeah, he, he get Deadpool gets electro, gets electrocuted bad by uh, Storm. Um, so the assembled X Men and their allies for hire take on nullified Storm and Cyclops. Um, at one point, Callisto is tossed off the roof of the Empire State Building, though Conan's able to save her with the uh, symbiote he now has. Um, but, uh, and Conan continues to insist that, uh, Iceman is clearly descended from Frost Giants, and does have a bit of a, uh, commentary about the, the state of the world, um, but Iceman basically covers everyone's escape by taking on all forces by himself, and he's actually seeming to do a pretty decent job at it. Um, Conan's offered a, uh, a bag of cash as well, though uh, he says that's not what he wants, and Wolverine shows up and, you know, hey, you know, Conan's my problem. And Conan simply says that, uh, you know, the Hellfire Club building is now his. Uh, explaining the castle suits him and he is its new king. And, <laughs> and Logan simply laughs and says, you know, it's the queen you're going to have to worry about. But uh, he admires, uh, you know, 
Wolverine does, you know, admire Conan. And, you know, basically Pat says that he'll give word that he has a friend in the, in the Hellfire Club building. Adding that a lot of bad stuff happened here, but, uh, you know, Conan can have, tells Conan to have fun while he can. Um, and he'll, he'll, Conan says he'll make sure there's always something old from the, from the cast to warm Logan when he, when he shows up. And that is where the issue ends. Which brings us to our next King in Black tie-in. Scream. So we've already had a King in Black Scream story in Planet of the Symbiote number one. Um, for those unaware, the Scream symbiote was a creation of the Life Foundation. Um, but way, way back in the first Venom miniseries, Venom Lethal Protector, um, of the of the Life Foundation symbiote, Scream is probably one of the more visual, more eye-catching. Um, she has a yellow, red, and orange color scheme and long hair, like Medusa long. Maybe, okay, maybe not that long, but still. Long and prehensile hair. That's kind of her shtick. It actually does make her stand out from other symbiote characters. Um, she also got all the other perks of a symbiote. So she's had three hosts over the years. Most recent, her most recent host being Andy Benton, uh, who was a f another former symbiote host. But yeah, anyway. Um, so the issue begins with uh, they're with a rundown of Demo Goblin, formerly known as Demo Goblin, and Shriek, um, and how during Absolute Carnage. Uh, she was sacrificed to uh, to hell, basically to give Dima Goblin a uh, a body to call home. And so, you have a combination of Dima Goblin and Shriek, and she's been running around ever since. Screams going after her though. It turns out that most recently, she's been Shriek. Shriek has been taking oh, Dima Goblin slap. Slash Shriek has been taking in uh, children and brainwashing them into a new family, cannon fodder, both, yeah, more more cannon fodder, but yeah. So, uh, Scream and Shriek f fight each other, um, with, and when Shriek escapes, the, the church she's occupying catches flame. And so Scream rescues the kids who are still in Shriek's thrall, but then goes after uh, Shriek herself. And two of them duke it out and end up uh, coming upon none other than the King in Black himself, Null. Which ends the fight between the two pretty quickly as Dima Goblin bows before her, the god she worships. You know, the only god she'll acknowledge. And Null, as she prostrates before Null, Null promptly shuts her up and basically, you know, get the hell out of here. I, I, I don't give a shit about you. He's actually cur he's actually curious about sure, about Scream. They all, after all, have encountered her before, they encountered each other earlier. But, uh, basically kind of a, you know, hey, you, no, basically Bulls, uh, you know, t talking to the symbiote, you know, you will be mine, I'm going to kill your human host, and, well, you know, then we'll make you mine. But, uh, Scream is able to defeat some more of his uh, dragons, partially by giving into her own uh, supernatural gifts, which, namely, Hellfire, which she uses to, but she manages to combine with her symbiotic abilities now, and uh, her and uh, Null go head to head, and she hurts them at least. But doesn't kill him. But they, like I said, she does hurt him, and kind of a okay, you know what? Whatever. Eventually, you'll be mine. And he goes off to, you know, be, to get his ass kicked by the gathered heroes elsewhere. And that is where the issue ends.
Yeah, well, King of Black is winding down. There's not too many. We don't have too many tie-ins left, I don't believe. Uh, there's still the uh, much the delayed tie-in, uh, second tie-in from Fantastic Four, but yeah. Anyway, moving on to Miles Morales Spider-Man number 24. Um, where we left off, it, it's been a, it's it's been bumpy for Miles. Uh, Uncle Aaron's gone, maybe dead, but don't know, but not necessarily. Uh, he fought Ultimatum, who was his a multiversal counterpart to himself. In fact, Uncle Aaron sacrificed himself to defeat. Uh, ultimatum. Um, you had the, the events of Outlaw. You had the events of King and Black. It, it, it's been a rough time for Miles, obviously. Anyway, so he's meeting up with uh, Kamala Khan, Miss um, Marvel, as as civvies. They're going. They're going to get some ice cream. They're going to hang out. And she's kind of disguising herself, uh, since, so that you know, not, no one, uh, none of her family might see her, and you know, and let her family know that. Oh, hey, no, no relatives might see her. And say, oh, hey, I saw, I, I saw Kamala in New York. It was, but uh, they passed by some of the devastation left from uh, Null's invasion, and there's a basketball court. It's still seems to be just fine. There's actually still even the ball there. So, Miles and Kamala play some one-on-one -on -one with powers. Of course, when someone is uh, stretchy, well, that kind of gives them a bit of an advantage. Even though, however, then you got Miles who can turn invisible. But there's another there's a problem nearby, so they have to go and take they have to go be heroes. Which you know that's fine. That, that's that's what they do. So they go, uh, apparently the building has collapsed, there was some, uh, da the floor by the stairwell was, was damaged and that it caused further, and it, it finally collapsed, much of the building fell, so Miles and Kamala rescue uh, one of the tenants as well as her, her baby who are trapped underneath. They also learn the name of the uh, landlord, who apparently the tenants talk to quite a bit, say, hey, you need to fix this, this is dangerous, someone get hurt. And he kind of just, yeah, whatever. So, Miles and Kamala find him, and they, you know, tell him what will happen and what he's going to start doing. And Miles, Miles take kind of takes the whole thing very, you know, is, is very intense about the, with, uh, about this. Basically, hey, look, do the right thing, or bad things will happen. They also do. Miles also lets Venom blast loose on the guy's car as they leave. But, uh, they get, Miles and Kamala get some ice cream, uh, you know, and then Miles goes home after taking her, getting her to the bus or the train. Apparently, something's happened, though. Spider-Man. You know, black, black and red costume wearing spider, you know, Spider-Man wearing a costume just like Miles's. His kid at the scientist. That is where the issue ends. Very obviously setting us up for the next major story from Oz Morales. <sighs> the Clone Saga. Now, I know, a little... To be perfectly honest, the second clone... The, the ultimate Spider-Man clone, clone Saga was actually really a really good take on the story. And I honestly have faith in Saladin Ahmed's abilities here, so I think we're going to get a really neat Clone Saga story with Miles. Moving on to our final book of the video, Carnage, Black, White, and Blood, number one. Yes, we're getting a Carnage, Black, White, and Blood series because, well, people dug the Wolverine one, and hey, that's what else you can, you can do the same concept with. Uh, first off, we've got the story Love Story. Um, I think this is set during Maximum Carnage. Um... But uh, Carnage is fighting Cloak. He's already taken a pretty good hit from Dagger. But they're kind of you know discussing how you know the women they each love are you know you know are involved in all this. And Carnage also brings up a, a, 
tells this tale about you know seeing these from ancient ancient Rome, uh, Roman warrior. Though I think it's just something that it, it, I, I think it who went who went to storm a city and. And he found he found a woman who was about to attack her, but she turned out to be just as uh, crazy as he was. And well, they and so the two of them worked together, and yeah, the realm ran red. But yeah, the reason I'm thinking this takes place during uh, absolute carnage is the fact that you've got carnage in his fam. You've got the carnage family there, so yeah. Next up, we've got a Wild West story um, entitled End of the Trail. It's by Benjamin Percy. Love Stories written by Tinny Howard. Oh. Love Stories by Tinny Howard and Ken Lashley. End of the Trail is by Benjamin Percy and Sarah Pacelli. That uh, a marshal is tracking this uh, killer. He talks about some of the, some of the ones he's tracked before. Um, apparently, though, the, there's something about this guy. Money doesn't to be any motive at all. He burned a bank down. Left a gold and silver puddle in its in its wake. He uh, massacred a tr an entire train. Not just a train car, an entire train of passengers. Didn't take a cent. So, Bunny he just wants to kill. And so... The marshal's tracking him. Makes his way to, a, you know, seems to follow the carnage. Fires a few rounds inside. There was a decoy waiting for him, though. But, uh... He, hits, he shoots the symbiote a few times, and then the symbiote, uh... takes over the marshal. And he realizes that, uh... he wasn't hunting carnage, rather. Carnage was hunting him. Baiting him. Luring him in. And becoming so that he could become the ideal vehicle for his hunger. And that is where the story ends. Then we've got You Are Carnage by uh, Al Ewing and John McCray. It's a choose your own adventure, but basically the concept is Agent Carnage. Um, and it's kind of a you know, does he try to be a hero like Agent Venom, or does he just revert to being, well, Carnage? Taking on some of the Animen, robbing a bank, taking up, or getting involved, or attacking a ho being in a hospital. It, yeah, it's, in the end, however, the uh, soldier and the symbiote are, are removed, and the soldier is, is killed by it. And that is where the issue ends. That's it for this part of the roundup. As always, feel free to like, share, and subscribe. Links to my Facebook, Twitter, Patreon, and PayPal can be found in the description box down below. This is Rock and Roll Spock signing off, saying, Live long and rock hard.